All right, Kevin from JJ Head Sensor. Good morning, everybody. Saturday morning. Uh, in our ninth or tenth month of the pandemic here, and uh, still at home. Um, but uh, I have been answering your emails and uh, making videos and uh, you know doing my part at home here. But I uh, hope everybody's uh, is doing well today. Feeling good. Uh, today we're going to get back to basics again. We're going to uh, just tell you how to take care of your hat. Uh, if you have what they call a snap brim, snaps down and up, is that something in the brim like a curve, that scooped shape? That's called a flange. The flange is the part that generally gets flat and soft and then it doesn't snap up and down anymore. So that's why they tell you not to leave your hat on the brim. Putting weight on the brim makes this get softer and flattens out, okay? So this part of the brim, generally you should snap it back up when you're not wearing it, even if you're a down guy. When you don't wear it, snap it back up and hang it. Or snap it back up, put it upside down on its crown, or even best of all, upside down on its crown in your box. There should be a little ring in the center of your box where it sits on a little ring. It elevates the crown, is almost floating. Okay? I like to just put it like this on a table or in a box. Either way is good. Hanging it, it's not bad. It might get a little dustier or something, you know. Um, plastic bag, you can put a plastic bag around your hat, but never tie it. It's got to get airflow inside. So just take it and tuck it inside here. You know, don't use a huge, huge bag that's going to let no airflow go at all, you know. Just uh, like the ones that come inside the Stetson boxes, it's a, called a Western bag. You just cover it with a bag, maybe cut the top off of it, tuck it in. That's a dust cover. Keep your hat dust free. Um, Alright, we're going to talk a little bit more about the flange and what to do with your hat when it's wet and when it's dry. Essentially, it's the same. Treatment is the same when it's wet or dry, but you have to just do a little bit more when it's wet. It's uh, just a little bit more intensive um, because you have the danger of the, um, the brim is wet and it's got weight of the water on it, so it's already, the curve of the, the brim is already flattening out, okay? It's letting go because of the weight. And it's got that flat surface underneath it, the tabletop or, you know, bottom of the shelf, which is flat, so it's going to weigh down, and then since it's wet, it's going to dry like whatever shape's under it. If you had a staircase pattern, it would flop into that stair, but since it's flat, it's drying flat like the table. It hardens up again, the stiffeners reconstitute everything, it stiffens up in the wrong shape, flat, flat, okay? So you wonder why it doesn't break up and down anymore. Why doesn't it stay down? Well, that's because the curve is like a hinge. It's a pivot point. See, I've got a nice healthy flange here, see? Okay. That curve is like a hinge. It works like a, uh, I don't know what the word is, sort of like a, you know, a pivoting pivot point, and it snaps it up and down. If this curve becomes lessened and droops, becomes more flat and more soft, there's really no hinge anymore. It's There's no up and down anymore. There's just sort of, you know, slight up and down, or just flat. Because there's, there's no curve, so there's no snapping it from that to that. See, the curve is going up now. Flip it, now the curve is going that way, okay? This brim does not want to go straight. It's almost impossible. You cannot make it go straight. That's how it's designed. The flange is made to certain. It's almost like the outer ring is, is a little too small. And uh, it wants to go down, it wants to go up, it does not want to go straight. Once the thing's going straight, you, you have, uh, you've lost the flange and you know, you're not going to have a correct brim. So you need to stiffen the hat up and get that curve back in it. Um, that's another video. But, um, alright, let's say you got your hat, it's not raining today, what do you do with it? Okay off the brim. Don't want this on the surface of the table, okay? Hanging it is good. Upside down is good, okay? Because the brim, there's no weight on it. 
the weight is just on this piece of leather here, that's it. If your head is very soft and does something like this when you hang it, like some straws that are almost really soft and stretchy, they almost, it's almost like a sweater. So, you know, it does that. You don't want to dry it hanging. Okay, that's the kind of hat you want to dry like this or in the box. But uh, for most cases, hanging it is okay. Or upside down or in the box. Okay, snap the brim like that. Okay, this is a regular dry hat. Now, if the brim is not wet, it really doesn't matter if you snap the brim. That doesn't matter. So I'll say like this, just keep your hat upside down or hung up or in the box. Don't worry about the brim. But if your brim is wet, okay, you come in with a wet hat, all right? If you let it dry like this, you are, it's almost like this is the natural position for the flange. You're letting it dry with that hinge snapped. So that's not its natural position. So something wrong is happening to it. So when it snapped back, it's not going to look right. Um, technically, it kind of should, but it doesn't. Um, it could be because of gravity allows it to dry something like, you know, weird or something. Um, the worst is when you leave it on its brim, it gets kind of like this S thing to the brim because there's like, you know, it's kind of doing this weird thing. So definitely don't lay it on the brim when they're wet because that's how you get the flat brim. Waterlogged brim, it's really soft, falls down and then stiffens up flat like the table underneath it. It just makes sense. All right, so for a wet hat, the one extra step you're taking after you put it upside down on your shelf, your closet, after you hang it, the extra step is flip the brim. Okay, the other thing you could do is you could look at the brim. If there's any really significant waves in it or something that just looks obviously wrong, get rid of that. Just take your hand and smooth it out a little. Sometimes I'll put it against the, like a, a straight edge, like the edge of the tabletop, and I'll use that as a guide, you know, I'll just kind of go against the tabletop. Um, or I'll just, you know, kind of straighten it out, and one side's high, I just lower it a little. Any way you leave it, that's how it's going to dry the next day. There'll be no surprises generally. So uh, take a look at your brim, straighten it out if, if you can. Let it dry with the flange intact. The brim snapped up. No weight on the brim. Okay, now storage. Um, I'm going to say when your hat is wet after you come in out of the rain, probably don't want to put it in right into the box. It's better to let it air out. Um, you could do a couple of different things. You could just hang it. Okay, the room has to be cool or room temperature. You cannot have a room that's like. Uh, that's warm. Let's say it's winter, it's January, February, and the heat is just pumping. You walk in from outside, you just feel the heat inside. That's a hot room. You're not aware of it, but the steam is drying out the leather and everything. You don't want that, that you don't want. So you're gonna have to crack the window a little bit or find a room that you could, crack, you know, like crack the window in the bathroom or in the kitchen and close the door behind you so that this can dry not in a hot room, but just in a room temperature or a cool room. Um, leather will shrink, um, even from sweat. So if you have a waterlogged hat and it dries in a hot room, the hat kind of shrinks and it's mostly the leather. It just dehydrates. It dries too, too quickly. So yeah, no heat. Keep it away from hot rooms. Um, and if you think you're going to get a hat rained on, Dust it. Get yourself a roll of packing tape. It's either brown or clear usually. The box packing stuff, you know that tape gun stuff? It's like between 99 cents and maybe three or four dollars. You go to the drugstore or hardware store, get some packing tape. It's your most important tool as a fedora owner. Make rings out of it, you know, like a little tape ring, like you'd hang a poster up with. Make a ring and then pat down the brim. Get all the dust off of it. Pat down the crown. Okay, turn the ring around to a fresh side, get all the dust off, do the top, okay, do the edge, do the sides, okay, especially with wool. Wool hats like light felts and stuff, a lot of um, lint accumulates around the sides, so you're going to have to spend a good amount of time dusting the edge like this, each piece. If you're doing wool, if it's a, a fur felt hat, the edge is probably going to take you two seconds, you just go over it once. 
with wool, it accumulates here and it's hard to get off. So work on each area until the entire hat, bottom side two, is completely lint free. Completely. I mean every speck. Get in here and stuff. Put your glasses on if you have to, whatever. I pat it down and you'll see it looks like a new hat. Um, people bring me hats for like steaming. Sometimes that's like 90% of what I do, you know. And they could have just done it at home. That is your most important. Now a hat brush is probably what you're thinking. What about a hat brush? Hat brush is not going to get all the dust off, and for wool it does zero. So it's only for fur felt hats. If you're trying to brush a, a wool felt hat with a hat brush, it's just the wrong tool and it doesn't do anything. So what you can do, and maybe if it's a long hair finish in a wool, yeah, that will help get that in line going all in the same direction. But that's rare anyway. Um, you need to use tape, okay? Tape down the edge, tape down the brim, tape down the entire hat when you're doing wool it's essential. It's the only thing that's going to get the, uh, the lint off. The hat will go from looking old to looking brand new just from the tape. Um, for fur felt, it's, a two, it's like a two-step process. You tape it first, you get every speck of dust off. I'm serious, you know. I usually have to use a whole bunch of tape rings, like five, six, ten, you know, and really do a good job. Be thorough, you know. Um, you're detailing the hat. After that, you're going to get your brush then you brush counterclockwise only, only counterclockwise. I'll hold it here, all right, I'll brush this way in the brim, and I'll just let the hat slip. See what I'm doing? I'm, I'm rotating the hat. So, you don't have to throw it, you can just, you know, carefully, slowly do it. It's not like a trick, like a pizza maker, you know, you just brush it, and you can even go like this. I don't like to do that because you make fingerprints on it, so. Or you could do a kind of a walking thing like this, to spin it. Walk. I'm going one direction, counterclockwise. That's the way the felt is laying in all hats. You're going to do the same thing here, counterclockwise, the top two, counterclockwise in a circle. Okay. Flipping it over, a lot of times it's clockwise. Other times it can be clockwise. The other side could be either or. You just do a test. You'll see it'll get dark one way. It'll look like you're brushing velvet the wrong way. Usually it doesn't matter too much on the bottom. You're going to find the top is what needs it. You'll see more scratches, more fingerprints, you know, lights and darks. This will just get everything looking smoother. First tape it, then brush it, okay? Um, brushing doesn't get off that much dust, really. You need the tape for the dust. The brush is more like conditioning the felt and getting it all smooth, getting rid of all this stuff. Also, a little tiny hit of steam, like just... That's it, like one misting of steam. We'll get rid of all the whites and scratches and the lights and darks and stuff. It'll make the felt look one even color. It gets all the hairs kind of standing in the same direction and you hit it with steam. Well, they're all kind of like this. So as you hit it, they all sort of, like a flower, come into place and they go back in the same angle. So um, that's a good thing to do. Tape it. Get all the dust out of the hat first, okay? After that, brush it and steam it at the same time or steam it then brush it or brush it and steam it. It doesn't matter. The order of the steaming and the brushing could be, you know, steam then brush or it could be brush then steam or it could be brush and steam at the same time. It doesn't matter. But I would do the taping first you know, and then that um, because the brushing really does not get the dust off. Uh, brushing with steaming, very vigorous brushing, that will get the dust off. The steam also gets the dust to the surface and allows it to come out easier too. Um, so you don't need a lot of steam too, just a little bit. Just like one misting, enough to make the hat just get covered in steam once. You don't have to keep steaming it. In fact, it's dangerous to do that because you could start knocking the brim out of shape. I would just give it one quick that's it. So the thing is just all hit with steam. It's more like you're not changing anything, you're just 
getting the color nice and even. It gets rid of like little tiny scratches and, and evens it all out. Um, what else?
I should be, uh, let's try that again. already a few times in this video don't stack it like this okay stacking your hats is bad if you need to need to stack your hats 
and you know it's the wrong thing to do, but you just gotta do it anyway, all right? Stack them upside down, okay? Stack them like this, and loosely, small piles. Make little piles of three or something. Three or four if you got it. Don't just make one or two huge stacks. Um, you know you're ruining your hats that way. And don't stack them tightly because you don't want a band to go from the top hat. So stack it so the top hat stops here, not touching the ribbon underneath it. Um, if you know what I mean. Stack it like that, not all the way down because you don't want to mess this band up. It does mess them up very easily too. And wind up with wrinkles on the band, similar to that one back there. But they could get way worse. Um, stack them upside down if you have to do that. Um, as far as Scotch Guard and stuff, I don't really believe in it. I've never really needed to it. I felt that if a hat is going to fail on you and curl up in the rain, it's going to do it either way, nevertheless. And if your hat's going to be fine, um, which most of them are, um, it's going to be fine either way. A little Scotch Guard, I think, might be okay if you plan on getting it wet, definitely, and you think there's a very good chance this hat's going to get wet. Do it very misty from above. Okay, don't do it underneath, don't get it on the sweatband is the idea, okay? Do it on the top, don't get it on this ribbon, okay? You could, there's lots of things you could do. You could make a piece of cardboard, a strip like this, like a belt, and then turn it into a, a loop, staple it together, and put that over the hat, and just make it that wide so it covers your band, and then spray it with Scotch Guard. But do it from a distance so it's misty. Let it dry, and before you spray, always tape down the hat with packing tape completely. Do like four, five, six more pieces of packing tape so every piece of dust is gone. Otherwise, you're sealing it underneath the Scotch Guard forever and ever, so you don't want that dust there. Before you spray, always dust first. Um, I don't really feel it's needed. I've used hairspray as a similar just kind of like a lacquer coating, like a stiff lacquer coating to keep it from, uh, you know, getting messed up in the rain, and uh, it seems to work for me. Um, but uh, I generally spray it with hairspray for a stiffener. If I'm doing that, um, I do it only usually the underside. I cover up the sweatband first, then I tape it down and clean the dust off. I spray it with extra hold, super hold hairspray. Doesn't matter the brand, Rave, Suave, Aquanet, I've used those three. Um, go from far back, you know, like a, a foot at least away, maybe a foot and a half away. Spray it in one misty coat, even thin kind of coat. Uh, let it dry. Repeat if you want when it dries, um, if you need to. Just need a little like that. It doesn't have to feel stiff, but it just should have some control up, down. You know what I'm saying? When you got that control up, down like that, a snap, you're good. If it's just like cloth, like wavy, it's not good. You don't want it to be stiff, cardboardy, but you want just enough for it to feel soft and still have control. Um, don't just go and do it. It's best not to stain your hats. It's best not to spray your hats, not to do anything to them unless they need it. So just don't go, you know, eh, I'm going to fool around with that thing. Kevin said, I could use a little bit more snap. Eh. The less you do, the better. Um, steaming hats take something out of your hat every time, I believe. You know, there's something... You don't want to just mess with your hats. That's what I feel. Best best tool is you roll a packing tape, keep the dust off of it, hang it, keep the weight off the brim, keep it out of heat, and that's all you need. Um, if you sweat through here, Okay. You could put one of those Cap Bennu sweatbands in the front. We sell them in our accessories section, jjhatcenter.com. Just go there. Accessories, sweatbands, $5. It sticks on. It's black cotton. It's absorbent. It keeps sweat from permeating through the hat and making stains and stuff. And you don't have to throw the hat out. Um, use that. Trim down the sides to make it a little thinner so it doesn't tighten your hat too much. And uh, use it in the front by the forehead. Um, those are good, but uh, usually you don't need much. I mean, you don't need to just steam them and stiffen them and all this stuff. When your hat starts to get problems, if it's wavy in the brim and you don't like it and you need it to, to be straight, try a little bit of spray, you know, but do it carefully, the right way, dust it first, you know, 
do it carefully. Um, steaming is always dangerous because you never know what hat is going to curl up in the steam. It can. And um, steaming can make your hat look worse much easier than it can make it look better. So a lot of the moves I recommend here, I show you how to do it without steam because I try to use as little as possible. Um, I mean, it could be good for a hat, you know, certain hats that are very hardy and thick and stuff, western hats, you know. But other hats, you know, the steam permeates through the, through to the leather, it dries the leather out. Um, you just, every time you're doing it, you're knocking the brim a little bit more out from its original crispy flange. It was nice and sharp. And every time you mess with it, you know, you're just... You're making that flange less and less crisp and less new looking. So the, the less you tamper with the hat, the better. I always feel the best thing to do is to keep it stock. Don't change a lot of stuff um, unless it totally bothers you and you just can't live with it or something. Um, use your older hats to experiment with, you know. But if your hat is nice, it's in perfect condition, don't mess with it. This is the stock shape. I've done a lot of things to this hat, but nothing permanent. I never steam it. You know, I rolled it, I've made it into pork pies and teardrops in front of you, um, but it's still fine because I just don't steam it. I don't do things to it. I don't spray it. I don't do lots of invasive procedures to it. Um, I hang them. I keep them upside down like this on my closet, my closet shelf like that. And that's it. That's all I really do. I keep them in the box. And uh, if you're like this, uh, your hats probably look really, really good. Um, that's it. It's simple. Yeah. Um, less is more. Corny but true. <laughs>
Yeah.